Our Mastering the Minis Block 6 is the spool block. So this spool block has many straight lines, but we do have some triangles here on the ends. To make those triangles, we're going to take our long pieces here, which are four by one and three inches long, and we're going to take our squares here. And to put these squares on the end here and make sure that we have our triangles, I am going to make a diagonal line on each one of my square blocks. When I place this square block onto my rectangle, I want to make sure that my diagonals are going toward each other. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch on the outside of the line right there. The reason why I stitch on the outside of that line is so that when I turn this over to make my triangle, I don't have to worry about the thread line. So I'm gonna stitch slightly on the outside of that line. So now I can simply fold over and I have perfect little triangles here on the end. So now I'm going to stitch the center part together. So the, the center part together here is the two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch center with um, sides of two and a quarter by one and three eighths. And so I'm gonna sew these together and we'll almost be done. I'm using a scant quarter of an inch right now for my very first block to make sure that when I've finished with this, it's going to measure at four inches. If this block doesn't measure, or the this row doesn't measure at four inches, then I can always increase my seam allowance without having to bring out the seam ripper. So I'm measuring at four inches here, which is exactly what I wanted. And I'm going to, I always do my inners toward the inner and my outers toward the outer. And then I'm gonna put my block together because I wanna make sure that my spool is going the right direction. Now I'm gonna take this one to this one and I'm gonna stitch across the bottom right here. There aren't any, um, there aren't any seams to nest in this block. So I can just sew without with lining up my edges. And if the seam allowances are right, then your spool will line up. And with such small pieces, I don't normally trim. I could easily go back and trim all those up, but with such small pieces, I haven't found it necessary. Time to press and square. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is press this really, really well. I press from both the top and the bottom so that I can make sure that, well, I've caught all my seams and then I'm ironing in the same direction. And I'm gonna fix this little part right here because I went off on my quarter of an inch. So I stitched that little part again. Um, another reason for ironing on both the bottom and the top of your quilt is to catch those little things that might Zap you in the end. All right, I'm also going to trim a couple of threads here. It's the first time I've had some threads in my minis, but I got a ton of them here. So I'm going to trim those out of my way and let's square her up. Nice thing about the spool block, just like with all the others, is that we have this nice diagonal going down the center. So I can line that up. Looks really good that way. Let's go this way. Just a little bit on this edge. And we have a squared block. So 
There's number six.